Well, good afternoon, everybody, and all of you from around the world to the 2020 Red Bull King of the Air. We are coming to you live from the beautiful, windy city of Cape Town, South Africa, here at Kite Beach, just off to the left from Table Mountain. As you can see, plenty of wind in store for us. We've had mouth-watering action here, round one, two, three, four, and five, done and dusted. We just finished our quarterfinal here, and we're going now into the semi-finals. We've had already final matchups in the past, but now it's just going to get tighter and tighter as we go into our first semi-final for the new decade here at the Red Bull King of the Air. Liam Whaley, 2015 world champion and a third place finisher from last year, up against 2017 King of the Air champion Nick Jacobson. In the commentary box with me, Jim Gaunt and Sam Light. Sam Light, our guest commentator for now. It's been good to bring you this action and we're looking forward to bringing you more semi-final and final action. Unbelievable conditions unfolding here as we see the semi-final number one underway with Nick Jacobson in the yellow vest in front of you with Liam Whaley in the blue. Conditions have been a little bit challenging here with the waves kind of on top of each other, making it difficult for these guys to find speedy, clean-filled ramps. But Nick Jacobson has no problem with that as he comes in towards the inside with his trademark jump one footer there. Just entertaining the crowds a little bit. But please keep spreading the vibe at hashtag King of the Air. Liam Whaley did stomp into a nice inverted boogie loop there. An added front rotation on the way down. He's looking solid at the moment, Liam Whaley. Liam Whaley has boasted the highest score so far over the 30-point range. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Nick's going huge there with that big boogie loop. Liam's looking very composed, like Aaron Hadlow, really showing his experience in competition. He's a very confident competition rider. Liam riding with a brand-new kite, the F1 Bullet, specially made for this type of competition cross between the WTF freestyle kite and the bandit and has looked very 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 much at home on it ever since he first laid his hands on it when he came to here in Cape Town in December but right now as we watch Liam heading out we're gonna dive back down to the beach Josie Astula is with Aaron Hadlow thanks guys Aaron yet another one in the bag mate going through to the semi-finals and you're gonna be going up against Steve and uh, Stephen Akadai what a heat getting it in the end with that handle pass congratulations mate yeah thanks man had to pull out all the stops once again the level's so high this year it's crazy Josh with all the local support I've been seeing this guy out when it's proper proper windy here in Cape Town and he's been sending some of the biggest kite loop board offs I've ever seen so respect to him it was super hard heat but well so happy I could pull it out at the end there I mean, both of you guys were going super, super high. Like you say, Josh touching the moon with those big board offs. Got a couple of them in the bag, but it, I think it was that final buzzer. Again, your versatility and mixing up all the different disciplines and that handle pass at the end just gave you the win here. So, yeah, congratulations there, Aaron, and I look forward to seeing you through in the semifinals. Back to you boys in the booth. Cheers, Joe. Great to see Aaron happy with his performance, and rightly, rightly so. As he said, Josh, one of the biggest players here in Cape Town when the winds start nuking. Seems to never be strong enough for Josh. Unfortunately, that's the last we'll see of him in the competition now, as it's Aaron Hadlow that books his place in the semi-final against Stephen Ackersdyke. Liam started this heat off very strong, getting in some big moves, adding a lot of technical difficulty. Uh, but Nick's going particularly big, so... All to play for. Well, there you can see Nick Jacobson, an 8.44. That is now officially the highest scoring trick that was most certainly the boogie loop that he did. Showcasing again that height is what the judges are looking for. Nick Jacobson, yeah. Nice board off jump there. And a, uh, I think it's a bit of a tongue grab as well. So, so, I saw, definitely saw a tongue grab there. That was a crowd pleaser right on the beach. But that 8.44 must have been for that massive, massive boogie loop at the yeah. back. It and was I think he's, I think he's stuck with the 10, it looks like. We saw him on the interview, said he was going to switch down because the wind had come up. But obviously, finding that he's still got a bit more to squeeze out of that 10. And the difference with he went along the skyline was massive. Heading out towards the back, Nick Jacobson right behind Liam Whaley. Both of them will most probably turn around and head back inside, hoping for a bit more of a cleaner ramp. You can see quite a bit of bump on the water. But Nick Jacobson there, that's what that's what it's all about. The judges are looking for 70% height and 30% trick. You know, the extremity on Nick Jacobson's boogie loop wasn't that huge, but the height he had on that was phenomenal. So, again, we see the emphasis here on height, giving him that well-deserved 8.44 above Jesse Richmond's highest score. 
So he's got a game plan that's working for him. It's all about the height. That's what the Red Bull King of the Air is all about, is who can go the biggest. And Nick proved that he can go. That was an amazing one there. Nick's pulling it together, bringing it to Liam. It's going to be a close one. I think that's what he's got to do. Liam, you know, it has been the, uh, the rider that most riders have said, oh my God, Liam's on fire. So how do you approach a heat like that against Liam? You just have to keep momentum up, I guess, and put the pressure back on him, hope he makes a mistake. No mistakes again from Liam. I don't think he's made a mistake yet today. Three out of three heats, super, super clean. Well, I think this, the, the positioning between these guys, between first and second place, is going to chop and change. I definitely think Nick Jacobson is going to drop that 6.3 in favor of that board off uh, mega loop that he just did now. But already, um, yeah, as I said, all right there. Two eight point maneuvers. The first rider to have two eight points, two points above eight, shall we say, in his heat, swapping out. But it's still, the scores are very close. You can see Liam Whaley there. If Nick can get another eight point, Another eight pointer, it's gonna it's, then Liam might find himself in a combo situation. I think Liam needs to do a handle pass. That's mm. one trick he knows that Nick's not gonna do and it's gonna improve his overall impression score at the end of the heat. There we have it. There it, there is. it is. Kung Fu pass. One rotation on the way down. Not the biggest amount of heights. I know it's tricky to tell from this camera angle, but you can usually tell by how quickly he travels up. But that'll as you said now, Sam, definitely overall impression is gonna add that extra point five or maybe that one extra point into this semi-final number one coming to live here from K kite beach in cape town south africa the kite surfing mecca of the world i think that's oh he wanted to was that going to be his first handle pass going out i think that's the threatening thing with liam isn't it isn't it he has the handle passes locked down you know it generally doesn't take him more than more than one attempt to make them i think other riders you're kind of on the edge of this ed edge of the seat you know they're going to land it liam's you know got the handle pass absolutely down so Nick is gonna need those eight-point scores you get three eight-point scores then the variety score uh, will naturally be high but you're gonna need it less so um, impressive riding from Nick he, he always looks very very smooth doesn't look out of control you know what? Ever, I does think he? Uh, Nick's a huge fan of Liam and I would imagine Nick's approach to seat very relaxed thinking oh well you know I can lose to Liam Liam's riding really well and in doing so he's not for any pressure on himself and he's pulled out a belter of a heat Two eight-point scores for Nick Jacobson. It's going to be interesting to see what the overall impression, but we've got just over a minute here. We know if anybody's got it in the tank to pull, th pull something special. In 2018, Liam Whaley just edged out Aaron Hadlow on the buzzer with a stomping boogie loop. Let's see if he can do it again. He's got a kicker. The timing looks good. It's huge. Massive boogie loop there, loads of hearts on that. I don't think that's an 8.44, but that could be into the eight point range. You really tried to steer the kite down a little bit to add more extremity to the move there. I think that's gonna bump up his score, but I don't think it's gonna be in the eight point range. He's still got time, I'm pretty sure. That is a huge <laughs> board off boogie loop. Is he gonna get back underneath and land it? No, not a clean landing. He might get scored on it, but I don't think that's going to be it. But less than 30 seconds on the clock. I'm pretty sure Liam Whaley is going to go for another handle pass. There's a quick replay here. Grabbing the board by the nose. Nick Jacobson, good control, managing to get his body position, but just hooking, just his, his body position being pulled a little bit to the left. It's tough. If you just have your little pinky toe in that strap, coming down from that height with that speed, it's hard to land. On the dying seconds there, Liam Whaley with a back roll mega loop. This is going to be a very interesting result as the heat is now over. Semi-final number one, done and dusted. And we will wait for the results to come in. And uh, we'll bring to you now again the top five tricks. We're going to see this change a little bit here. We're going to see Nick Jacobson enter into the fray, no doubt, with the biggest boogie loop of the event so far. But semi-final number one done and dusted. So strap into your seats, boys and girls. And there we have both of these riders. <laughs> A 9.02. That score must have dropped in just after he did that one on the inside here. We didn't even see that up during the heat. The highest scoring move so far. That's going to change up the results here a little bit. That is a big score. Yeah, it's uh, huge. The, I think it's the biggest we've ever seen at the King of the Air. I think this yeah. is the first time we've seen a, a, a score into the nine-point range. So well done to Nick Jacobson already securing that. This overall result is going to be very tight. Are we going to see third-place finisher from last year no longer competing? 
I'm not going to make any conclusions just yet, Jim. Well, the variation score has been key, and from the way we've been talking about this heat, we're kind of presuming, or at least I was, that Liam's going to automatically have the higher variation. But, as the judges have said, if you do three massive different boogie loops from different families, then that can be a super high variation as well. I mean, if you scored a nine and two eights, you know, that's what they're looking for. I think there's so much hype around Liam's riding at the moment. It's going to be a bit of a shock result. Again, we don't know yet. They haven't told us the overall score, but I think Nick's probably going to get it with just that extra height and extremity doing some of the biggest moves of the day. Uh, this is going to be very tight. I think I think Liam Whaley, you know, would have given himself a better chance if um, if that Kung Fu pass on the inside was maybe a little bit higher. He did want to go for the handle pass on the way out. We haven't seen him do it today, but he's gonna. he was going to go, and then you just saw the bar just pop completely out of his hand so I can imagine the judges are taking their time my goodness look at this I don't think it's a result we were expecting and the highest score of the event so far Nick Jacobson the Joker in 2017 winner stomping with a 33 point total and edging out last year's third place finisher unbelievable Liam would be disappointed he was hoping for first place but unfortunately that's the way things go Jim, semi-final number two. What a result that was. I mean, that's pure, pure big air kiteboarding from Nick Jacobson. Control, height, and with enough extremity to tick that box. I think Liam's mega loops, particularly on the boogie loop, were lower with the kite. Very, very, very stylish, but just the height that Nick was getting, and that is what the event is all about. Height, but you have to combine it with something. Wow. What a way to kick off the semi-final. Arguably a shock result with Liam Whaley, the rider's favorite in many people's eyes. Ejected from the competition in the semi-final stage. The action rolls on. North teammates, Jesse Richmond on your screen right now against New Zealand and Mark Jacobs. This one's gonna be massive, Sam. Both these riders have uh, shown really, really good tricks and really dynamic mixed moves. Jesse opening the account there with a the big grab boogie loop. Mark doing a triple back roll, mega loop, one foot, a lot going on there and stuck it very clean. Well, Mark Jacobs knows that he's got his work cut out for him here. JC Richmond is looking on form, but right now on the beach, Joe, you're standing by with our winner from semi final number one, Nick Jacobson. Nick, you have got to be stoked about that one. That is a big win for you. You were going huge, getting some of the biggest scores out there. You've got to be happy, but you seem so relaxed. I am. That's the only way that I can actually perform as I do, because if it, it's, it's all a mental game. And I'm, every time I see all these guys jump, I get so... I just can't stay focused, so I need to like stay calm, breathe slow, get that heart rate down, and don't look at the other guys. That's my strategy. Well, that strategy is definitely working for you. You just taken out Liam Whaley. There was a lot of hype for him throughout this competition. He's obviously that's going to be a big win, and you are the first finalist. So a big congratulations. How does it feel to be right there again? It feels amazing. It really feels amazing. If I don't, if I don't, if I don't win this, it's fine. You know, I made it to the final. I'm good. And I have nothing to lose. So, let's see. I might go even higher now. Hopefully. I hope we will see you go higher and higher. One more time. Congratulations, Nick. And as he said, it doesn't matter what happens, he's just happy to be in the final of the Red Bull King of the Air. Cool, thanks, Joe. A super stoked, but very relaxed. Nick Jacobson sees another final yet again with Jesse Richmond. Back roll handle pass. One, two, three, rotation all the way down. He's going to come down quite fast. Don't think that's going to be considered a clean landing, hey, uh, Sam? How does no. he bounce off his shoulder? You can see he oversent the kite slightly. He sent the kite a little bit too far back in the window and there wasn't enough time for it to catch him before he landed. That's a big scoring trick. I do really like that move. It's got a lot of risk factor. If you get your hand on the wrong side of the bar, it's going to be a long fall to the water, but not quite getting it as big as we've seen him do it before. You can see his kite actually stayed to the left. Normally when you do the dangle pass like that, you, t you tend to want to let it drift the other way, just kind of keep you a little bit more in the flow. But this time he does just that. He knew he needed a clean landing. Well done there. Straight back into it. Yep. No, he knew he needed a clean one. He did just that. Mark Jacobs looking really confident though. 7.48, 6.92, 6 6.52. Pretty sure he's going to replace those. I do see this guy going a little bit more nastier than what he has so far. A first semi-final appearance for Mark Jacobs. Jesse Richmond, of course, no stranger to this, for this side of the competition as he heads back out now towards Robin Island. Got some nice little kickers 
A lot of chop on the water. You can see the guys are slowing down just a tad before they head out. Negotiating the swells. Mark Jacobs unhooking. Kung Fu pass. Is he going to get underneath it? Yes, he does. Not a lot of height on that, but not bad nonetheless. It'll help, but I think he's going to have to do another one knowing that we've got less than five minutes, only yeah, still four and a half minutes left. Kung Fu pass, whipping that around. Double rotation on the way up. Good control, just getting that down there just to secure a soft landing. Yeah, I think he just wanted to match Jesse's trick. They're going for trip, trip right now. Mark's just in the lead, but both very, very close. All to play for still with four minutes to go in the heat. Mark Jacobs hitting the kicker. Slightly late there. Tick the tack just catching him. Oh, he's not going to make it. No, the card control was the tough part, but at least he held onto his board, that, thus avoiding a long body drag. I'm pretty sure we're going to see him go for that again. JC Richmond. He's eyeing, eyeing something out at the back. It's one of the, the hardest things is to time that ramp and when it just breaks in front of you and you've got all that speed, you just have to go for it anyway. It's fractions of a difference here in Cape Town, isn't it? Between you can look at the kicker and you think perfect, 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 and just at the last minute, it's game over. You'll see here in the shallows, Jim. In the shallows, the wave actually breaks a little bit faster. Out of the back, it breaks a little bit slower, but there's a little bit more bump. So it's kind of a bit of a pro and con between these two. Your timing has to be right. I mean, you can waste precious time waiting on the beach, waiting on the beach, and then heading it out only to find that the way is already broken in front of you. As we saw uncharacteristically there, Jesse Richmond not getting timing. Oh, but he's going to make up for it with that no problem as he flies through the screen there with a huge back loop, mega loop, and a board off. You'll see the riders sort of hanging on the inside because if you do Jesse Richmond going for a huge back roll mega loop board off, I think he's sticking it. Going to put him very close. But yeah, you'll see the riders going for those inside kickers because they're a bit steeper and sharper and they're harder to time, but when you do time them, they're the best ones. Also a lot more close to the judges as well, so it's pretty much bang in your face, isn't it, rather than the kicker's way out back. Exactly. They say it doesn't make any difference, but there's no doubt about it. It just looks bigger when it's closer. So really interesting heat at the minute. I don't think we've seen these guys push the mega loop, boogie loop rotations, double back rolls as far as they have before, so I think we've still got those to come in the heat. Seems like they've both been going for their kind of wild card maneuvers early on to get those in because they know that they're going to have to put them in at some point against each other. The handle passes, the board offs. Do you think we could see a double half cap from uh, Jesse? We haven't seen that yet in this event. He pulled it off last year and it just kind of put in everybody in a bit of a state of awe, you know, <laughs> as, he, as he did it. We know that's something that he can do. I mean, it's, it's like I call, I call it a cranking move, you know, just kind of everything just, I think he just resets all his joints and ligaments. And everything is kind of like, okay, everything's loose now. We're good to go. So the double half cab, a trademark move of his. Hopefully we get to see it. Yeah, it's interesting he hasn't thrown it yet. Maybe just deciding there's too much risk with that move, especially as it's looking pretty windy out there. Yeah, I think in the years before, it's been five or five or eight knots less when he's done it, hasn't he? Which makes quite a bit of difference when you're at the peak end. Mark Jacobs, not the best of timing there, but he's going to try to take... No, nope, he's not going to get back underneath it. He's got less than a minute and a half as he gets dragged away from his board precious time there i think just looking at that maneuver there and mark getting a slightly faulty uh takeoff i think that's what's impressed me about aaron so far in this event he's made every takeoff count jesse richmond he's not done yet stalls a little bit back roll card lib with a nose grab i guess i suppose just adding a bit more variety into it it's the scores are still pretty close but he's now edged into first place I think Mark Jacobs is going to have to pull something special out of the bag as we see less than a minute in the second semi-final. Wow, what a heat. Jesse knocking wow. out Mark in the last minute of this heat here. Mark's heading out, looking for that final kick. He needs a big move. So he's doing the board off after the mega loop with the rotation. Oh. Now, the judges said in the meeting that they wouldn't score that as highly, even though it's got more technical difficulty, because it's much harder to take the board off before the loop. Oh, Jesse Richmond wanting to unhook there. 30 seconds left on the clock. Maybe he was <laughs> looking for that half cab that you're waiting he was for. Saying, I'm waiting for the <laughs> half cab. <laughs> <laughs> he said, heard you. <laughs> Come on, dude. Give me something. Not that you haven't given us anything spectacular to watch. This has been amazing here from the Hawaiian... Heading out nice and controlled. The unhooks. There we go. Back roll. Handle pass. One, two, three, four rotations. If he lands this, I think that's it. Smooth I've as butter. Just that was unreal. He's got that trick so down. 
Oh, just managing to rescue his cart there from hitting onto the water. So they won't actually dock him too much, or if, if anything at all, actually. Even though he crashed his kite there, he maintained his speed. Um, and it's better actually doing that than, than putting your bum in the water, you see. It was kind of after he landed the trick, he dumped his kite. You see on that last rotation, the way he brought the kite back down into back power down. while he was backwards from the kite. I mean, he's just got such aerial awareness. He's an unbelievable rider. Very impressive big air abilities there. I think that trick should be scored much higher, to be honest, you know. I think the easiest way to see how hard a trick is is how many riders do it, you know, and almost everyone's doing the Mega Loop board offs. Not anyone's doing that trick, so why isn't it scoring higher? And I mean, it's 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 a super tough maneuver. I mean, you know, we've done it before. You know, the handle pass is that high. The risk factor is so much high. But that is the end of heat 32. End of heat semi-final number two. We'll be waiting for the results. Never mind. There they come in again, stomping with a result higher than his previous one. Jesse Richmond with an 8.4. Overall score 8.46, 8.2, 7.86. Up right there with Nick Jacobson and the previous seat. So Mark Jacobs, he'll be happy to have made it through to the semi-finals, but a fantastic result nonetheless for him. He'll be happy. But Jesse Richmond looking in fine form here for the 2020 King of the Air. Please keep spreading the vibe at hashtag King of the Air. We are coming to you live from Kite Beach in Cape Town, South Africa, the kite surfing mecca of the world. The crowds are looming large pulling in here after work and soaking up some of the biggest and best big air kiteboarding action we have ever seen. Signal Hill, lots of white caps in front there of Greenpoint Stadium. Hey, there's our commentary box, uh, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you. I can just uh, take a wave and you'll, you'll see me flying through the roof. And there we go. What a great view these guys have. So the situation so far, we have two kings already in the final, Jesse Richmond and Nick Jacobson, both with two King of the Air titles each. Coming up in the last semi-final now, Aaron Hadlow against Stephen Ackersdyke. Stephen looking for his first Red Bull King of the Air, Aaron Hadlow looking for his third. Which one of these two riders is going to make the final? The this last, is going to be, uh, oh, going to be a very close heat. Stephen goes huge and Aaron's got a lot of technical difficulty, so it's all to play for here. This is going to be tight. We have now seen the overall impression score playing a big, big, big role Personally, I do think that Aaron Hadler has the better chance with the overall impression score, but we've seen we, we've seen upsets already here, so there's no saying what can happen. That just keeps it so exciting and you know, unexpected. So the man from UK, five-time world champion, two-time King of the Air champion, going up against third-place finisher next to you, Sam Light, and uh, 2014, one of the lowest cut loop angles in the sport, Stephen Akersdijk, a great ambassador for the sport. There we go, heat is up. The last semi-final for the day. As we see Stephen Ackersdyke heading out, looking for a kicker. Kevin Lang, um, Kevin Langry, Aaron Hadlow from the shallows. He spots one. Good timing. Stalls on the loop. Not the biggest and highest, but a comfortable opening maneuver. I think he needed maybe just a bit of a more of a kick. And look like also here yeah, in the middle, Sam is like it's kind of just a bit of a drop in the gust from time to time. Yeah, the wind isn't as strong as it does get sometimes here. Not as much as those few weekends ago, but the guys are on nine meter kites. And some of them are on tens, but not quite going as high in the opening minutes of this heat. Sometimes you'll get that a little splutter here, but I'm sure the wind will be back in just a few minutes' time. Yeah, no reason Stephen can't do this up against the technicality of Aaron. We've already seen Nick Jacobson's pure, pure big air approach knock out the technical giant Liam Whaley in the first semi final. That's Aaron Hadlow on your screen right there on the white dice kite heading back in. We're going to see a trick from him on the inside. Looks like he's sending the kite back, edging. Up he goes into a back roll, board off, stalled. And just doesn't quite make the landing. Again, two tricks back to back there on the inside, not quite getting the height that each rider needed. Kind of looks like a bit of a slow approach there from Aaron, but just at this point, we're watching Stephen head out. We're going to come back to him in a minute. Joe's on the beach for a third time with Jesse Richmond. Jesse, how's it going? Jesse, yet again into another final, mate. You're already going to be in there with your good friend Nick Jacobson, and we're going to see who is going to be that final finalist. What does it feel like? Oh, too good, too good. This is oh, awesome. <laughs> I really feel the my animal instincts come out there because we're dancing with Mother Nature. We're in some pretty extreme conditions and giving it everything we got. So, oh, this is awesome. Hope you guys are enjoying it because we're having a great time. Well, 
absolutely stoked for you, Jesse. We're going to let you get ready, get ready for that final. As you say, law of the jungle out there, and you've got made it, mate. Congratulations. Good one, dude. You. Back to you, boys, with the Stoke from Jesse Richmond. Thanks there, Joe. In Stoke, indeed. A lot of people who have visited Cape Town said, we want to come back. We want to enjoy this. We want to partake of the Stoke that goes down here as we are now into the last semi-final for the 2020 Red Bull King of the Air. Welcome to you all again from around the world. What a seat to see the world's biggest and best big air riders show us what this sport is all about. The judges are looking for 70% height, 30% trick. They're looking for variety. They're looking for power, technicality, style, and above all, height. In the commentary box with me, Jim Gaunt and our guest commentator, Sam Light, to take you through some of the action here unfolding at Kite Beach Live. The crowds are building, pulling in from work more and more. And we are now not far from crowning a king. Yeah, it's getting serious now. This is where it's getting very close. Aaron sticking that move. He just butt checked earlier. He had two of those butt checks, so he got that trick. Landed cleanly. Steven out the back looking for that big kick and not quite getting the timing right. You see, letting the bar out so he doesn't travel too much and lose his up, upwind advantage. He's going to be gutted about that because very few kickers coming through that clean. There was a fraction of a difference between hitting it and that can be a real heat winner almost to put you you know, in control. If you get into the eight point scores as we saw Nick doing earlier by hitting those big kickers out the back with a really, really powerful kite perfectly, you really make the difference. You kind of really got to strike gold on those when they come through. Aaron Hadlow heading out towards Robben Island, not seeing any any suitable ramp these guys want the ramp it just gives you that extra three four sometimes five meters on your jump we've already seen nick jacobson show just how important that height factor is with an 8.44 that's uh, one thing i love about the king of the air is that it's just all about who's going to go the biggest and you can see nick got rewarded there for going the biggest and look this is classic so aaron three scores in the sevens and if you look at the individual scores Stevens on pretty high sixes, but at the end of the day, it makes a big difference. But this is going to put him high if he lands this. A big board off oh. with a scorpion kick as well. That's clean. Okay, so that's going to make a difference. He's going to be above the sixes for that trick then. Looping his kite very low there. I think the judges will like that. A lot of the low kite loop angle there. Quick little replay from a front roll board off there, Sam. As you said, quite a tricky maneuver. Also tried it myself. It is a contestify to that. But Aaron Hadlow heading out now. Back roll, mega loop with a board off. That should also score close to the seven point range. But yeah, we're going to see Steven Akersdijk's score shift a little bit. He needed that at this point in the heat because he's probably in a combo situation where he needs to drop that 6.46 on top of the board off mega loop that he just had now. So he's going to go back out and hopefully put another one to that. He knows he needs something special. Interesting to see Aaron's score drop on that last one. It was a really, really tidy control back back roll with good extension on the board off great great combination both these riders have been actually two of the cleanest riders throughout today very very rarely made a mistake their mm. kites never been out of position they've made all the rotations they've made most of the landings very very few butt checks now they need to start putting it on the line oh mega loop back roll mega loop with a late rotation he just, Sam, he gets that kite so low coming in. He's got by far the lowest kite loop angle coming in. Yeah, exactly. And I think his kite in particular is able to do that big mega loop board off out the back, sticking Ooh. it clean. I don't think we've seen a landing come that close. Minimal time there. I was just going to say, Steven's not quite lining up, but he just answered my question there, landing that big mega loop board off, which is going to bring him very close, losing that bottom score. Aaron's still got all his tricks in the sevens, I think. Stevens just posted 7.94, which has brought him closer. 7.94, the highest score that he's had so far, but there drops a 7.92 for Aaron Hadlow as well. It'll be very interesting, this overall impression score. I think if Aaron Hadlow goes for a handle pass here, that could give him the edge he needs. We haven't seen Steven Akersdijk do the handle pass. We have seen Aaron resort to it multiple times, including the Mega Loop KGB, one of only two riders to land that maneuver and of course the first rider to do it when he won the, his first title back in 2015.
Well, it's over to Aaron now to pull something out. Here we Stevens go. just moved ahead. Here it comes, the handle pass. Not as high as Jesse's, but it's going to count. Yes, it does. OK, it's gonna, probably going to be enough in this heat. We haven't seen Stephen go for those. He doesn't need to match Jesse's height. He just needs to land these handle passes. Still go high into Aaron the rotation, makes the pass. Still got a lot of work to do to land here, Sam. He didn't quite get the takeoff he wanted, but still managed to put it through in classic as a style. Didn't oh. even notice he didn't get a good takeoff. Yeah, interestingly, brilliant. Stephen had just gone ahead of him there, just at that, that point in the heat with the 8.08. .08. That must have been for that huge mega loop. No. No, that uh, was that was a off. big one, Jim. That was definitely a big one. You, men you yeah, mentioned his kite as well, and, mm. and that GTS kite has one of the most consistent loops, mm. I think, in a hybrid style kite. You know, the, the way it revs around the window is incredible. So consistent there, whoop, oh. always around the bottom half of the window. Solid boogie loop there from Steven Akazak. Super low kite angle, not the biggest amount of height, but that's gonna that should put him into the seven point range, maybe a six point nine. Aaron Mega Loop brought off. That's just gonna. That's not gonna be his highest score, but that's just gonna up his overall, his overall variety score as we see the clock winding down. Three, two, one, and that is it. The end of our last semi-final. Aaron Hadlow and Stephen Akersak. We're gonna anxiously wait for the results, but I think Aaron edged it out. I think the handle pass is gonna do it again. It wasn't the biggest one, but let's see. I mean, Stephen had a lot of variety in his mega loops and his rolls and his board offs. Uh, he had the biggest mega loop board off. So let's just see how much variety score they give him for those. But no doubt Aaron ticked the handle pass box as well as the multiple back rotations, back roll rotation with a board off, straight board off. I mean, you know, his trick list was high. Yeah, Aaron must have landed about 10 tricks in that one. Showing his experience, landing everything perfectly clean. I could flip a coin though, because Steven's few maneuvers were particularly big, so it could go either way. That's why we've seen Kevin win in the past. hasn't mm. hasn't done necessarily as much in a heat, but the three tricks in a final, when it comes down to it, mm. were bigger, big, and biggest. Yeah. The wind, perfect strength for this event. Once well, again, we if you just the most win possible. Yeah, you do want the most. The better. That's yeah, the absolutely. Right Cape Town, the ideal destination for that one of the most famous tourist destinations in the world and of course hosts the biggest and most extreme kiteboarding event in the world the red bull king of the air coming to you once again live here from kite beach in cape town south africa there you can see three flags corresponding to the vest that the riders will now be wearing in the finals we already have confirmation of nick jacobson and jesse richmond into the final and we are anxiously awaiting the result here between aaron hadlow from the uk and steven akerstag from the netherlands both of those guys finalist aaron two-time winner here steven as you said jim just been so consistent very fluid landing his maneuvers been very exciting to watch so the judges i'm sure will be assessing this one nicely but year on yeah. year we hear riders saying that they don't want it to turn into a handle pass competition but at the end of the day there has to be a difference yeah definitely you no know? you cannot you cannot take away from the fact that the handle pass is an extreme maneuver a lot of power a lot of risk it's just the way it is I, I don't think you can fight that one away but here we have it now the results dropping in oh my goodness edging out Steven Akersdijk by less than a point again uh, another 8.2 overall impression score Aaron Hadlow will see him through to his third final here at the King of the Air wow. unbelievable he'll be super stoked about that well done there to the five-time world champion and two-time King of the Air champion less than half a point there less than half a point unbelievable Okay, so we are just going to take a breather before the final and uh, just check out some mega loop action. The apartments right opposite Kite Beach there. We're going to jump to the clip in a minute when that's ready. But uh, Sea Spray Apartments there right behind Kite Beach. And uh, what a place to stay. Great, great view of the action there. Really popular place to stay. I think you've... I can't work out if... I Sea Spray. Anyway, it's somewhere near there. Yeah, every time I come here, 
All right, guys, next to the King of the Air, we have another mind-blowing cardboard event coming up in 2020, Red Bull Mega Loop. And here we have when the perfect storm hits the Netherlands with over 40 knots, 16 of the world's best cardboarders will be challenged to show their biggest mega loops. New this year, the winner of the King of the Air will automatically be qualified for the Red Bull Mega Loop Challenge on standby from the 1st of April to November 1st. They will all be on standby to wait for Mother Nature to give them the perfect conditions. So stay tuned for this event. And of course, you can watch it also live on Red Bull TV. And here we go, building up for the final of the Red Bull King of the Air 2020. And we now know who the finalists are, and they've all been kings before. Jesse Richmond, 2013, Red Bull King of the Air. Nick Jacobson, 2015, Red Bull King of the Air. And Aaron Hadlow, who is looking for his hat-trick of titles to match Kevin Langere, who became the first rider to claim a hat-trick of Red Bull King of the Air titles. So we are set for a phenomenal final. The wind is still kicking in. Look at that tablecloth. It is thick and dirty, which means that we are in for a great, great evening session here. It's been a bit of a task for the riders to find the kickers that they're looking for throughout the day, but that's part of the game. As you can see now, we've got small ramps coming in, but there are some bigger lumps in between these sets, and it's going to come down to who can find the biggest jacking kicker, Sam. It's all to play for, Jim. I'm really excited about this one. As you say, all three of these guys have won this event before. They've got a huge amount of experience and all got a very different style, so it's going to be a really, really exciting final, and I can't wait for it to get started. Yeah, indeed. It's what we've been looking forward to all year. This event comes around once a year, and it's the only time that we get to see these stars of kiteboard and riding together. All from different parts of the world, but at this time of the year, everybody comes together in Cape Town. Great, great training conditions, but also for this, the biggest performance freestyle big air competition in the world, the Red Bull King of the Air, opposite the great, great Table Mountain, which is hidden behind the tablecloth, thankfully, because that means it's windy, but we can still see Lion's Head there off to the right. What a setting. So just at the moment now, we are going to check out the road to the final. How did these three riders get here? It has been an unbelievable event so far. Can you believe it? After many hours of action, we are now into our first final for 2020. Nick Jacobson. Rich, uh, Jesse Richmond, Aaron Hadlow, as you can see, there they're going. So having won in heat 15, Jesse Richmond, all three of these guys winning the heats, the heats in round number three. Classic effort, Richmond already stomped immediately into this event and both, all three of them winning and therefore going straight into the quarterfinal, again, winning each of the heats into the semi-finals where Nick Jacobson definitely threw an upset at Liam Whaley with some of the biggest boogie loops we have ever seen in this event. Now seeing himself in yet again a final and a chance to reclaim his 2017 championship. But again, each of these three guys have already won a King of the Air title and they're going to be hungry for another. Yeah, and Aaron's had a bit more work to do today because he finished outside the top six. He had to start from uh, round one, also had to qualify through the video entry, which we've never seen from Aaron before, um, but had a poor finish last year because he had to withdraw with a rib injury. So Nick and Jesse and Aaron all looking great, great form for the final. Joe, all yours, bro. Take it up. What's happening down there? I mean, guys, what an event. I mean, up there in the booth, down here on the beach, you can just hear and feel the vibe. The wind seems to be pumping up that tablecloth. I reckon that, you know, Table Mountain is going to disappear. It's starting to get windy. The beach is amped. The crowd is going wild. And the riders, they have that hunger. They have that fire. In the final, we have three Red Bull King of the Air winners. We have Jesse Richmond, we have Nick Jacobson, and we have Aaron Hadlow. What a way to end it. Who will be on top here for 2020? But before we go to that, we're gonna go to a little bit of history and watch the last seven years of the Red Bull King of the Air and see what will happen here this year in Cape Town.
That action just gets you fired up. But to add on to that a replay from the last couple of years, here we have it, your first final for the 2020 Red Bull King of the Air, starting from the left, Nick Jacobson, Jesse Richmond, and Aaron Hadlow. And the heat is now underway. This will be three-man heat. There's not going to be a flag-out sequence. We're only going to know at the end who is going to be crowned a king. Strap into your seats. We've got 13 minutes of blockbusting action as we see Nick Jacobson opening the account. Nice mega loop there with a one-footer. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Strap on and hold on. I think there's no room for errors in this final. We've got three of the informed guys from the day. I think obviously Liam's going to be disappointed, but no argument with Jesse, Nick, and Aaron. I think they've been the key performers of the day. I think they've been very all round. And I think uh, Nick just showed immense height to make his way to the final. So uh, let's hope the wind stays and these guys can keep the standard high. Wow, three legends going at it. It's going to be really, really interesting. I know Aaron is as hungry as ever. He would love to even up his titles with Kevin. I know that will be bothering him now. Kevin's got three and he's only got two. So what can he put out the bag for us? Aaron Hadlow there. Back roll, Kartler bought off with a tail grab on the way in. Just adding some nice variety there. All three scores in the seven-point range already. Trademark one-footer mega loop there by Nick Jacobson. He did that move in the 2017 final when he claimed his first crown over Aaron Hadlow again. It's also here in this heat. So this is just mouth-watering action. I just get the feeling that we're going to see a new move in the final as well. I think there's something from one of these three riders is going to come out that we haven't yet seen yet. Aaron, Aaron Hadlow. not quite getting his kite low enough out the back there. Hit a bit of chop just before the uh, before the kicker there wasn't the cleanest. But again, Aaron making his way around the rotation, you know. He still makes it. He still puts a score on the board. Yeah, just keeps the scoreboard ticking over. You know, it's always crucial, especially again for that fourth overall impression score. So again, if you've just joined us, 2020 Red Bull King of the Air coming to you live from Kite Beach in Cape Town, South Africa. We are in the finals. Each of these guys have claimed the crown at least once before. And in less than 11 minutes, we will be crowning another king. As we see Nick Jacobson heading out pops over one little piece of white water is he going to get some good timing on this yes he will launches up not as big as his uh, semi-final boogie loop but not bad nonetheless needed a bit more of a lower kite angle i think on that one but already jesse richmond dropping his first eight point score here he goes again oh i think he wanted to go for a back loop handle pass there but not quite the best of timing first i think first critical mistake i think we've seen from him didn't quite get the takeoff he was looking for and decided not to go for the handle pass, which I think was a wise move. He wouldn't have landed it. It's better to keep his ground and go for it again. But he's already posted some big scores on the board. Jesse's got an 8.2, which is the highest scoring trick of this heat so far. Aaron's only got... Oh, he's got three sevens. Very close right now. That's what he's done. He's just banged in three sevens. We barely, barely even noticed. But this is an extended heat. 13 minutes for the final for the three guys. Plenty of time, plenty of time to catch up. I think that's the important thing. Plenty of time to find extra maneuvers if you do find yourself slipping behind a bit. You obviously don't want to slip behind too far. Nick propping up the table at the moment just with two trick scores on there. There, propelled himself up, three sevens. He's moved up ahead of Jesse. Jesse's now on 15.58, but still with a third score to go in. Ah, and there we are, quickly. They're all bunched up again, 21.36, 22 and 22.58. Action all the way right to the end. A little kicker on the inside for Nick. Beautifully stylish board off. Oh, just doesn't quite get the landing. First mistake we've seen from Nick Jacobson all day, I would say. And it was from probably his favorite move, the Megaloop board off, which he just looks to have dialed in. There goes Jesse. There's the first handle pass of the final. Did he land it cleanly? We will find out. The camera follows Aaron out the back, finds a kicker. Just aborts that one. See, Jesse just not getting his hand on the other side of the bar there, and that made the difference with that move. It just goes to show the risk factor. If you don't get your other hand back in the perfect position, you're going to land very heavy. But he's definitely going to go for it again. There's plenty of time left. Just over eight minutes as we see Nick Jacobson eyeing out a kick at the back. It does look like something. Again, the waves are bunched up against each other, making it difficult to get momentum. But, oh, he definitely wanted to go for the trick there. But opting out, he's going to turn around, make his way back in towards the beach. I think we saw this from Jesse in last year's final. He 
great, great riding in the semi, made a few mistakes back to back in the final and just find himself with mm. so much work to do in the second half of the final. It's going to be important psychologically for him to, to, to make his next trick count and count in a big way because Aaron's still racking up the points with very, very few mistakes. This time a double back roll. Ooh, manages, nice. to, manages to make the wave, give him an extra little kick there. Yeah. He could have crashed that, but he didn't. Here's the pass from Jesse. Got the pass okay, and as Sam said, didn't quite get his hand on the bar back in the position that he wanted. He did manage to hold on there, but we did see his kite fly down in front of the screen into the water. Thankfully, he's back up, but knowing him, he's going to go for it again. Megaloo board off there by Nick Jacobson. He should have enough time. Should land it with ease. Oh, he's, he's also making the Megaloo board off look easy today. Just landing it smoothly. A lot of time, a lot of composure. I know Aaron Hadlow will probably also go for the handle pass. He knows he's going to have to do that if he wants to edge out Richardson. Jesse Richmond here. But the, oh, the score is very close. It's going to change. So we have seven minutes left. It's going to chop and change. We see some swell coming in, providing the guys with more, more ramps. Here we go. Jesse Richmond unhooks. Pops off. Awkward timing, but we know he can make it happen. It looks like this one he's going to have in the bag. Stomps it cleanly. That should be within the eight-point range. He had a lot of height on that one. The guys would have seen that and know that now, here we go, we've got something on our hands. Aaron would have seen that. He's in an upwind position. He would have noticed that go down. I think he's going to have to answer with another handle pass. Do you think it's too windy for a um, mega loop handle pass, Sam? I think, no, I don't think it is. I'm not sure Aaron's going to do one in foot straps because of the swing ratio you get on that trick. I think it's going to be, I'm not sure he's going to do it. Yeah, with. Well, we saw Liam Whaley go for it in the finals last year, and, 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 he, and he came out with third place. I think he was also hoping that it might have added a bit to the score. But both Aaron already last year, you know, kind of ditched it, you know, realizing that you can't, you can't get the height that you can. You know, I think we'd love to see something like that going out. Imagine that someday, you know, back, you know, Megaloop KGB going out or maybe a Megaloop back mope, you know, of a, of, of a sort or late mope, you know, going out. You know, that would be exciting. And we've yet to see someone do that. But I'm sure in the coming years we'll see it. But uh, the scores are definitely going to start dropping in now. Aaron Hadlow in the yellow vest. Got a lot of speed. Again, awkward timing off the kicker, but making the most of it. Back rotation and then a forward spin. Just varying up the rotation a bit, but he's not getting the height in the kite. I think if he just gets high in the kite angle. There we go. Big one there. A lot of height there from Jacobson. Got enough time. He lands it cleanly. That should be within the seven-point range. Again, that might even drop away his 7.14. Yeah, we're waiting for a couple of scores to come in because I think this is very close right now. There we go. There it is, 8.38 for Jesse Richmond on his handle pass. Nice. Back roll mega loop there with a nose grab. Just going to add to that overall impression score. But, oh, Jesse now got two points in the eight-point range. Aaron Hadlow won. Nick Jacobson not far behind with a 7.88. I think, I think it's a matter of time before we see Aaron either do the, the Kung Fu coming in or the back roll dangle going out. So pleased that we've got a close final. I think these guys have been matched in scores throughout the heat. And what we're going to see now is them trying to find a difference. Nick switching it up, doing his uh, one footer on the inside. We haven't seen many successful tricks on the inside. Jesse again going for another handle pass. Spin, three, four. Will he land it again? He does. That's the second one in this heat. He's landed with great, great ability and control. He knows he's got, I, th I think that might even drop away his 7.3. Yes, it's a repertoire of the same maneuver, but he knows he's got an overall impression score. A good one already lined up. Aaron Hadlow again. No, not, not the greatest of back roll card lips. Stylish nonetheless, but uh, not, not going to be good enough to drop away any of his top three scores. Just over for four minutes. Well, now exactly four minutes remaining. This final is flying by as we see five-time world champion head out towards Robin Island. He unhooks. Oh, he wanted to. The kicker just fading in front of this. He's definitely going to go for that handle pass. He's got plenty of time to do it. I think if he can execute this one at, at, at a good, decent amount of height, he might just be in for his third King of the Air title could be the event winner and I think that's what we're going to see isn't it in the last three minutes we're not going to see it from Nick but we are going to see a big mega loop combinations again very very smooth consistently high consistently smooth Nick doing all he can in this final I would say and actually edging out Aaron now whoa Aaron's high he's secured he should land this one comfortably got a good decent amount of heart don't think it was as high as Jesse's but that should drop away his 7.68 I think it will I think the judges will 
reward that in his overall score, I think that'll yep. make a big difference at the end. Nick, having not done a handle pass, it's going to help. But yeah, as you say, not the biggest handle pass, but he's getting some tricks on the board. Just wrecking them up, wrecking them up. I think that's the thing with the final, you know, you've got to go huge. It's those massive big maneuvers that make the difference. And currently, Jesse's got those big moves. Azza needs a big gust and a big wave. Yeah, because Jesse seems to be able to make the whitewater work. He's, he's hitting the small kicker whitewater and he's making it work. Here's, Here he another, here's another bit. Here he goes. Back roll, mega loop, board off. Nice extension there with the leg showing a lot of control and landing it cleanly. I think that's going to be a seven point score. Don't know if it's enough to drop away the 7.3. Might be, might be, not sure. Very close. I don't know if Aaron. Oh, back roll, mega loop with a board off, spinning another rotation on the way down. Oh, and not sticking it. Oh, just over two minutes left. What have these guys got in the bag? I know Aaron, if, if Aaron can just get in another big mega loop, Jacobson also in a good position, not getting as high as the semi final, but trying hard nonetheless. I think that would have been a big score because he managed to get the board off before the loop, and the judges will reward that, but just butt checking and not getting the landing, so that'll be a zero. It's a shame. This caddies are going to be telling the riders that there's nothing in it. All of them are on fractions of 23 points. The last two minutes of the 2020 Red Bull King of the Air final. Who is going to win? We have no idea. It's going to come down to the last minute. Who can keep it clean and who can go the biggest in the last minute? This is very close, Jim. And of course, we've got the overall impression score that will need to drop as well at the moment. I would say Jesse Richmond's overall impression is, is looking good, but now being a judge now very very tough this is definitely the closest we've seen out of the whole event so far exciting what we want to see in a final Aaron Hadlow out towards the back oh he wanted to try the back roll mega loop with the board off again but it looks like the wind fading on him there plus the kicker not presenting himself but he's got just over a minute I think he's got one more chance is he going to do a kung fu pass coming on the way in I would, I, would, I, would, I would say that that's that's a maneuver I would go for if he can get the height on it. One minute to go, he's heading in and he's going to see this maneuver from Jesse, whatever it's going to be. Jesse's already ahead, he's carrying momentum over the first bit of white water. Is that ramp going to jack up? He's hooked in. Oh, his foot came out there, but he made it work. One footer, unintentional one footer, back roll, kite clip, and all landing in the water. But that's an example of experience sticking the landing in the wave. But back again here now, Nick Jacobson, what's he got for us? Just kicking the air a little bit there. Get out of my way. I think Nick's just enjoying it. He's out just there. having he's fun. Loving the moment. Fun. It doesn't look like he's too fast. He's just stoked to be in the final with these guys. Yeah, all of them guaranteed to make the podium. Nick going to be loving that. Here goes Aaron. Potentially the last trick of his event. It's a double back roll with an unhook at the end. Can't mm. quite make the pass. Was looking to combine that. That's a move I've been wanting to see. But there we go. End of the finals for the 2020 Red Bull King of the Air. Jesse Richmond, just one more for show for the crowd. One, two, three rotations, nice and inverted, super calm and controlled. What action we just saw unfold here. Three of the best big air riders in the world, each of them already having claimed a crown, and an additional one will be added to that shelf. Unbelievable, Jim. What, 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 are we gonna, you say we're going to flip a coin here for, for this one because I have no idea. Well, again, it's going to come down to the variation, isn't it? I mean, I think from what we've seen, Jesse had great variety throughout the competition. Aaron did as well. They both had the highest, highest variation scores. But right now, we're just going to see what the top five trick scores were the, from the competition. There is a mystic prize up for this as well. And uh, yeah, look at that. Uh, Nick Jacobson, kite loop board off from the semi-final, 9.02. The only rider to break into the nines in this event. Liam Whaley, kite loop with a front roll variation. Liam Whaley from Spain, he'll be gutted to have gone out in the semi-final, 8.58. Jesse Richmond with the third and fifth highest scores. The closing of the final there, we saw him on the highest tricks. We're waiting for the variation to come in. That was with a dangle pass, 8.46. And then in fifth, he did a dangle pass on the way in, 8.42. And then Nick Jacobson. 
in fourth position there. Wow. I mean, what a day it's been. I can't believe that we've gone all the way from the beginning, from yeah. the first heat. You know, this is a 16-day window. The forecast was looking edgy, and then suddenly Thursday has come through. Wind all day. It's been unbelievable. It has been amazing, Jim. You know, the first time, actually, only this is the second time that we've completed the entire event from beginning to end in one day. 2016 was the last time we saw that. So it's exciting, and it just shows you the potential that there is here. Wind already in from the early hours of the morning, and here we have it. The tablecloth still looming large. We could have still had another few hours of competition here. As you can see, the wind is just hanging on, hanging on, hanging on. It's not going to let up any time soon. So that was the final 2020 Red Bull King of the Air. Keep spreading it now on hashtag Red Bull King of the Air. For those of you who are hanging on with us here live from around the world, it's been absolutely amazing to bring you this action of the world's biggest and best big air riders at the world's biggest and most extreme kiteboarding competition what a picture there jim what a display of kiteboarding we've seen a a variety of note you know in this in this event you know a lot of guys struggling with the board off mega loop definitely there was a struggle there a couple of guys very confident with it. i think josh emmanuel quite good with it nick jacobson really good aaron of course jesse just oh just every time he did his his it was it was so secure unbelievable to see this level just going up 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 and up yeah, and I think particularly you ended on Jesse there, so I'll start there. I think what Jesse managed to do was make the smaller kickers that had already turned to Whitewater turn those to his advantage, whereas, you know, everybody was kind of in that final was hunting the bigger ones out the back that were kind of harder to catch. And yeah, Jesse, really, really good rider from him. Hasn't lost a heat. Is he going to make it a clean sweep and win the final as well? We will find out in moments. But it's been a great, great day of competition. The wind's been strong. Strong enough for riders like Joshua Emmanuel to really, really show us what they've got. And we've had surprises as well. We had Ayrton Cutsolino making his entrance into the competition as the first strapless rider. We saw the first woman enter the Red Bull yeah. King of the Air, qualify legitimately and ride two heats earlier, Angeli. She was on the leaderboard for the top five tricks at one point. But, but that there, right, there is Jesse Richmond on the beach. He looks stoked as we are waiting for the result. And he's going to have to make his way through quite a crowd there to the podium. We'll wait to see Aaron, another finalist, who will be putting his kite down somewhere as well, and then they will all stand together and we'll find out who has won. But everybody there grabbing their moment with 2013 Red Bull King of the Air, Jesse Richmond, Jaws Charger, big wave rider, all round technician in kiteboarding, just bundled ball of energy. He's got his fan club there. So Nick Jacobs in the final, Aaron Hadlow in the final, and Jesse Richmond in the final. And I think that was the right final that we ended up with, Colin. Definitely. You know, I think uh, we, we saw a shock upset with Nick Jacobson against Liam Whaley. Liam was hungry for this first place. But there you have Joe, our man on the beach, taking a bit of a jog. It's good to see him getting a bit of a workout for a change. <laughs> Not that he needs it. He's an incredibly fit guy. So it's been unbelievable. Day. So there you can see Jesse, he's going to join up with his fellow competitors, Aaron Hadlow and Jesse Richmond. They've had an absolute stoking day. As I say, Jesse Richmond unexpectedly but deservedly edging out Liam Whaley in the semi-final. Aaron Hadlow consistent through each of his heats, winning each of his heats all the way from round one, having to come in for a first time through the video entry process. Three of them will be standing there together as we still await the results. I would imagine the judges are going to take their time. The overall impression score, as throughout the entire event, we have only seen at the end. So it's going to be very tight. In the back of my mind, I think I have an idea who it might be, but uh, I'm not going to share that any, well, any moment. I would imagine that, you know, from the way we were commentating, you're probably going to say Jesse, but then at the same time, we did see him go for two or three handle passes. Is that, are they going to think that's variety or are they, uh, you know, it was rewarded high, he got a high reward and a score. So is it therefore also going to get high variety? Who knows? It's a tough one. You know, I think, I, I personally think that Aaron Hadlow, if he had had his mega loops, you know, higher and lower, it would have been maybe a bit more definite in my mind. Um, but his, his maneuvers were a little bit low, a little bit kind of angle. I'm not saying he can't, I still think he can. He had a lot of variety, but I think if he had it higher and lower, it would have been a kind of an open and shut case in this instance. But all three of these guys super stoked to have been in the final. Aaron, just, Jesse Richmond just soaking up the crowd. Yeah, Aaron Hadlow, he is super stoked to be in the final. As Nick Jacobson said, I'm just happy to be here. Here comes the moment. So we will anxiously hold on to our seats. Okay, everybody, so I have results in. Your 2020 Red Bull King of the Air champion in first place is...
Jesse Richmond! Okay, so confirmation there, nine point variation score for Jesse Richmond held it together, faultless.